What's up everybody? Welcome back to another episode here at the Center for Stingray Biology. We have a massive unboxing video for you guys today. Nah, I'm just kidding. I figured Rod was showing off his boxes, so I wanted to show off my boxes. He might have more boxes than me, but my boxes are bigger, okay? But anyways, today we have more pups yet again. And uh, it's a very big litter. It's one of the biggest litters I've had in quite some time. That just shows that, you know, the animals are finally doing better. And I've always said, when they're doing better and eating well, we're gonna produce more. But it did come out of this system right here. So we were trying to establish a, a trend or connect the dots to a trend that was happening in my previous litters. So if you guys were watching my previous videos, I think you guys know what dots I'm trying to connect. So you guys remember the previous births, we had some stillborns and we had some underdeveloped or undeveloped uh, embryos, right? We were gonna see across the next few batches coming out of this system whether the same thing was gonna happen. The bad news is, yes, it did happen again, okay? But the good news is, also this was a very big litter, or not a, well, not very big, but a good enough litter that I'm very happy with. So come on guys, let's take a look. It is in this system right here, and I'll let Oi just give you some quick glances that you, know, you ought to focus on. So there's one that didn't make it. There's one over there drifting around that didn't make it, okay? Uh, but other than those two, all the other fish look really good, okay? And the total size of this litter is 10. But out of the 10, we lost two, so we got eight. Let me go get the container, and then we're gonna start catching these pups out, all right? So I'll be right back. Hang on one second. So we're ready here. Let's get started. Um, why don't I just pull these two dead ones out because they're drifting around and it's uh, annoying me a little bit. And we'll quickly examine these fish. Oh, this stuck on the net, the stinger. Okay. Oh. Ooh. So you see, they're really decomposed already. Um, so they've been dead quite some time. All their skin color is gone. But we kind of can see the black on there and you can see the spotting pattern, right? It was very beautiful fish, but dead a long time ago. So I'm just gonna take this and put it in the trash real quick. All right, so now that I've disposed of those two pups, let's get to the good part. And that's fishing out these healthy pups. And from what I see already, we got some really nicely spotted fish, really good pattern. Oh, I already see a yolk sack on them. So these guys might be born a little bit early. Let me check my stickers as well to see if I actually have a due date on them. So you guys following my videos, you see the quality of the fish that I'm producing is, you know, Increasing right so that that's a good thing. Yep. I was right. Look at that big yolk sac so quite possibly uh, These were born early. Let me look at the sex also This one is a female Okay, so when they're born early like that or with a big yolk sac We have to be concerned whether they are actually gonna survive. Oh, what's this? I didn't see this earlier today. This white stuff floating here. Let me see is that sperm? All right, yes it is guys. So we've got some sperm here, right? That's evidence of remating, which is, which is a good sign. So now I can mark the date down and be more confident next time to know whether these pups are, you know, on time or premature. It might be one of those things where um, I didn't catch it last time, like uh, when it was mating. So maybe that's why I don't have a, a date on them. But as you guys should know by now, whenever we have a big litter of pups, the size of the animals tend to be smaller. And that's probably, you know, given the limited amount of space uh, inside the mother's womb. So 
they can't develop as big but at this point you know quality is my main concern and they are looking really good now uh, this yolk sack is a little bit smaller and this one is a male I, I don't know what I prefer whether I prefer less pups but bigger size or more pups and smaller size of course I would I think I would prefer more pups right so that's always better to have more but if it ends up being harder to take care of and I end up losing some then it actually kind of balances out so I think uh, I'm tossed up on that one but why don't you guys let me know in the comments below what you think if you were me and you were a breeder would you prefer a smaller litter with larger animals that are easier to take care of or would you prefer a larger litter where the animals are smaller and a little bit more delicate harder to take care of and we may lose some so you let me know what you guys would prefer if you were in my shoes so this is a female alright so we got two females and one male so far you know what I've also been debating and I might do this in the next video and again you guys can also jump in here and let me know what you guys think I was thinking to give the animals in this system a break from the breeding process. I've had a couple of um, subscribers comment on that as well before. Do I ever give the animals a break? Well, I'm thinking about it now. Wow, that is really nice. All right. Oh, big yolk sac, and it's a male. Okay, so like I was saying, uh, I'm debating um, to separate all the males and females in this system and give the, everybody a little bit of a break. Really, it's actually giving the females a break. But I don't think the males really need the break. So I'm considering pulling up all the males into each one of these floating cages and then leave the females down below and then maybe just during that time really uh, condition back up the females and uh, feed them really well and this way they, ha they have no stress coming from the males and it, it might make a difference when I put them back into a breeding situation. Now, I don't do something like that very often because in my opinion, I feel that, you know, nature knows, or mother nature knows best, right? And if, if the females aren't ready for breeding, um, they won't be as susceptible to letting the males mate them right and that has always been my approach but if I start to see birth defects and stuff like that and I can't figure out the reason why then you know I think then I would believe that it's time to give them a break so we'll see um, I, I will be sure to check out everyone's comments and uh, if I see that everyone is in favor of giving this system a break then I will make a video and separate everybody out really nice but man when, it's tough when I see quality like this you know it's hard for me to say okay let's step back and take a break um, really beautiful fish wow another male how many males is that I don't know. One, two females and a male so one two now it's three males Oops. wait now it's three males and uh, two Females. All right. Oh, you see this? This is another problem I, I've been having with these tanks. The rays, they like to work on the coating of the tank and they bite at it. And look at what they're doing. They're actually peeling off the epoxy coating off my tank. So, yeah, I'll show them real quick. You see on the side of the wall there? That, that, that orange like hole, that's them biting and peeling off the, the paint. I move over to the next thing. You can see it better over here. You see on that bottom corner? Yep. You see that? They're just biting away at the, at the epoxy coating. That just means more work for me in the very near future where I have to empty these tanks and move out all these animals and recoat it. Okay, so where are these pups? Let's go back here. Okay. You 
again. All right, I need a couple more females. So hopefully this one will be a female. There's still a little piece here. Okay. All right, let me give it a little bit more water, not enough water. Okay, so a lot of spots on this one as well. The spots aren't quite as big as on the other one, and this one is a female. We are now at 50-50. I'm starting to think maybe she might have given birth a little bit early. I don't know, but it's been a while since I had a big litter like this. So my eye on these things might be a little bit off. Oh, this is a nice one. Nice big spots and a lot of spots. That's what we all want. Okay. Ew, all this crap in here. Okay. Is that a beauty or what, guys? And it's a female, so it's a pretty little girl. So now we are up to four females and three males. So there's one more left. What do you think? Oh, I male or female? Female? I hope so too. Let's get more females. All right, so all around, a very nice batch, very consistent in the, in the looks and the quality. And that's, ah, oh, it's a male. All right, so we got 50-50 ratio, four males, four females. So I already have a tank ready. We're gonna go drop it in the tank. You guys wanna see who's the father and the mother? Okay, come on, right here. That's the father. That's the father right there. Okay, he's a pure black diamond. And the mother is this one down here, and she is a black diamond hybrid. The combination here has produced for me very high percentage black diamond pups with very, very good spotting. All right, guys, I want to thank you guys again for watching. If you guys don't know already, Rod and I will be at Aquashella in June. Uh, I think the dates are June 12th and 13th. So if you guys want to meet up with us there, go get your tickets now. It's in Orlando, so you know if you guys want to take your kids to Disneyland, perfect time, and get to meet some YouTubers, okay? And the uh, Aquashella is just a great show all around. Um, I think there's like those really cool glow-in-the-dark um, murals and stuff like that. So I think it's a, a very fun event for the kids. So uh, we will be there and uh, hope to see you there, okay? So thank you for watching and please be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you guys.